Morning guys, this is a video on making of the third and fourth shaft bearings. I'm actually making them out of two parts and silver soldering them, as you can see there. And then I'll machine them to final dimensions afterwards. Lately in my videos I've been doing a lot of silver soldering, but never really explained the process. So here goes. The first thing to get right is the flame. For silver soldering we want a carburising flame. This here is a standard propane flame. All the propane is being combusted by the oxygen in the atmosphere. As I add oxygen, the flame becomes more intense. We can use an oxidising flame like this one, which is extremely hot and intense. However, all the oxygen is not used up, and so it is easier for the surface materials to oxidise. You cannot solder on an oxide, but this flame is good for heating. The second flame is much less intense, with a long internal cone, and is a carburising flame. In this flame, the oxygen is completely used up, and so the surface is better protected from oxidisation. I will heat from below at first, as the biggest mass is the bearing and so will require the most heat. As I heat this up, we should talk about flux. Flux is used to prevent oxide, chemically clean the surface and allows the solder to wet more easily. It's a good gauge of temperature as well. At 100 degrees you'll see all the water boil off and will leave this white bubbly surface. Too much flux on your work is never bad, but the more you put on, the more you have to clean off. As I've found with my boiler, there's a hell of a lot of wire brushing. You can see here the discoloration of the bronze as oxygen from the atmosphere reacts with it. At the minute I'm just keeping the flame moving the whole time, heating the whole work. As we reach around 300 degrees, copper alloys take on a horrid grey appearance. Or is it green? I don't know. Grey or green. But luckily for us, not underneath the flux, which keeps it protected. When choosing the flux, it's important to choose the right stuff. There are an abundance of different fluxes for different jobs. Stainless steels, high temperatures, cast iron fluxes, all sorts. So make sure you choose the right one for the job you're doing. One of my friends tells me my voice is so boring that he actually uses these videos to go to sleep at night. Well, at least I'm doing something good, I suppose. You can see just now, as we move to 400 degrees, the flux starts to melt and chemically clean the area. I want to keep moving around to keep putting heat in equally. Then, as you move towards 600 degrees, the flux will take on a watery appearance. It's now time to pull back the flame and start trying the rod. The silk solder I use, which is Easy Flow. 55 I think it is it melts around 660 degrees so now is the time to start touching the rod on as you can see if it doesn't melt I move the rod back and dip it back in the flux powder again you really see around this area here where the flux is doing its job keeping off the oxides and cleaning it
You can see where I've not put the flux, it's going completely black, which would, wouldn't take any solder whatsoever. There we are, the rod's just beginning to melt. Just add a little at first and then let it run around where it wants to by capillary action. As I add some solder, I run it in using the flame. The solder will run towards the heat so you can direct where it goes with the flame. You can see it does run around quite freely by capillary attraction. And so by using the flame I can just put it where I want. Now I have a good base of solder built up on the joint, I can start to develop a fillet. This isn't really necessary, as the strength of the joint is not really affected by any gap over 15 thou. The fillet is merely cosmetic, and you may want to use it on parts. Using the flame to melt some solder in, and then move it round with the flame. Keep the flame back, as moving it too close will result in the solder being blown away by the pressure and we'll leave it looking like the proverbial of avian variety and now I'll give it a last blast round with the flame and we're done don't be tempted at this point to move it or quench it as the solder inside will still be molten even when the outside looks solid wait until the piece cools to black and then quench Well. Even though my voice is boring, I hope this video has helped one of you at least either get to sleep or do some silver soldering of your own. Thanks for watching.